other side. And that, that last verse of Psalm 23 is unbelievable, right? Because uh, his, his mercy will follow me how long? All the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Forever. Unmitigated, unfailing love forever. Wow, beautiful. So when this song is played, I'll let that rush over your soul. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to show you our affection back in the small way that is giving of, the, of a portion of all that you have given us. We thank you that you're the God that says, uh, I will supply all your need according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We're grateful to have you. In Jesus' name. Well, there was an illustration of this song uh, with us here last week, and we had, uh, if you were here last week, we did something uh, that I've never done before, that is take communion in the baptistry. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I've never done that. So, so that was exciting to me. Was last Sunday an exciting Sunday? Yes. Absolutely. So if you could help me by taking, there's an insert in your bulletin that looks, it's got a bunch of bullets down it. And it, and it says uh, the, the outward sign of an inward condition at the top. Okay, this was your devotion for last week. And so, so this is in your bulletin this week. And we're going to bring these students up. We're going to bring three of them. We're, we're missing one this morning, but we're going to bring three of them and present them with their uh, baptism certificate. All right? All right. Um, uh, Elder French, could you come forward there and help us with this, please? I'll hand the certificate, and you give the hugs. Okay. How would that be, all right? And then if after you get your certificate and your hug, you just go right over there because we're going to read something to you. Okay, Zoe French, would you come forward, please? Lila French, would you come forward, please? And she gets the hug there. She was in that big, oh, no, you're right over here, yeah, okay. All right, Lila French, thank you. All right, good, good. And then Caleb French, congratulations on following the Lord. Now, uh, th this is a good thing. So how, how old are you, Caleb, now? Okay, so when you're 17, I want you still to hug your dad, okay? So, so at 17, you still hug your dad, all right, and, and, and your mom. My, my mom used to come out on the basketball court at, at Stowe High and give me a kiss, you know, and, uh, 
when I was 17, and that was, you know, you just had to do it, right? It's your mom. All right. All right, so, so take this piece of paper. We're not going to read the upper part, but starting with the, bullet, the bullets, all right, where it says they have been recreated. I, I want us to read this out loud, kind of like a respo you know, some responsive. We're, we're just going to read the whole thing. And um, we want to have an understanding of what they, th th what was, ha what happened inside that they symbolized last week. We don't want to miss this because because we took the communion and then we put them in and we said, whoa, they 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 went into the death of Christ and now they're raised to newness of life. So these things, do you have a copy of this? Okay, okay, you can look on it. Okay. These things are the things that happen to them inside, and for everyone who's a believer, this happened to you inside. And I hope that I hope this gets you so excited as you're reading this that you want to like get up and walk around. You say, "Woo!" like this, because that's the way it should be. If you read this document right here, and there may be ones of you that could pick up, like where did Pastor come up with these words? How did he write that down? I want you to watch this. And then I'll let somebody say where you think, all right? Where did I come up with these words? All right, so let's start. They have been recreated in Christ, in God's image, to be his masterpieces, to do good works that God has prepared in advance for them to do. They have named Jesus as Lord of their lives and submit to his rule and sovereignty. They are reconciled to God through Christ, and are now able to be his ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through them. They are no longer servants, but Jesus calls them friends. They have received Christ as the sacrifice laid out from the foundation of the world to forgive their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Christ lives in them, and they have received the gift of his Holy Spirit. They have been made right with God by the righteousness of his son, Jesus Christ. They are pardoned from their sin. They have been adopted into the family of God, and he now calls them his beloved sons and daughters. They have been bought back from sin and set free to serve God with love, obedience, authority, and power. They are no longer lost, but they have been found hidden with Christ in God. Whoa. I mean, what do you want to say when you finish reading that? So, amen or like something? I don't know. Like, whoa, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right? That's what you want to say. This is, it's really awesome. Thank you guys for obeying in front of us. This was a wonderful thing. All right, you may be seated. So, so I hope, uh, I hope uh, that this is where I want to like, uh, lead into what we're going to talk about today from God's word. I don't want us to forget those three students standing here. This is very important because those three students standing here with their dad, that, and what we just read, that is real. And I'm going to build a three little ideas to you, okay? So, so three places that you can live. I picked this up in a book um, called The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis, and then over the years of probably the last 40 years reading Oswald Chambers, where, where there's these three locations you can live. And the very first one is a place called reality. The French kids are reality. <laughs> is it cool or what? Yeah, what we just saw is real. What happened in the baptistry last week, that's real. That's where heaven dawns on earth. And we go, whoa, something happened. So, whoa, I'm getting the chills. Heaven came to earth, right? Now, we, we also live at this place called um, the actual world. There, there's a, we, we live on earth. And every once in a while, we get a glimpse of something that is just straight out of heaven. So, so um, my, after my dad passed, and, I, and I'll share this in some other message some other time, but my, after my dad passed, 
I was uh, I I left the trucking business, and I went into um, I went to seminary, and I started you know t- taking seminary school, and I was remember one time sitting way back in the stacks of the books there at Asbury Theological, and I was in one of those little carols you know, and I'd been there a long time. I kind of been up all night. Now it was early morning. I went, was the first guy in the library. I went back and took my thing because I was writing a, you know, like a 30-page paper. And I heard these people talking out in the foyer. And I thought, man, don't they know this is a library? <laughs> right? And I was kind of getting, uh, you know, like this. And then I kept listening to the voice and the voice sounded exactly like my dad. Whoa. And, and goofy enough, goofy enough. Well, maybe I was tired or whatever. But I stood up out of the carol. I walked out into the foyer. I'm thinking my dad. Of all things. I, I got out there. The people had dispersed. There was nobody out there. You know, they they'd left. Didn't see who it was that even sounded like my dad, right? But, but then I went back to my carol, and I sat down in front of my paper, and I made my paper get wet, right? Because God opened up heaven for a minute. You see what happened? He said, here's a snapshot, John. Here's a window into what is beyond. And I sat back down there. And I said, whoa, God, I'm sad about the loss of my dad, right? But thank you for bringing his memory to me very, very clearly just now, as though he was standing out there. Man, was that a gift, right? Now, it's a funny thing that I'm in right now, right, in the actual world, is that I go around to people's rooms where people are dying. So so the lady died this week, right? I was at at the room, and... She's, she's dying, and the, they got 30 family members there in the room. And the lady died. But, but, but here's the cool thing is, in the actual world, God c- opened up heaven for me at one point, right? And now, he says, now that I gave you comfort, I want you to go give comfort to somebody else. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 through 5, look it up. It's very cool. Now, There also is a third place, and Lewis calls this place the unreal. (laughs) And so down at the bottom of your outline, you're seeing three places we could live. You could just write that down. You know, okay, there's the real place. That's when heaven comes in and we see it. There's the actual place, okay, that we live on planet Earth, and then there's the unreal. And so you say, say, Pastor, uh, tell me a little bit about unreal. This is the place in Malachi where it says, You know what? There's people who say that uh, that it is right in God's eyes to do evil. (laughs) Does that does that make any sense at all? No. It's it's unreal. And so Lewis writes this incredible book about. It's called the Great Divorce, and it says this over here where heaven dawns on earth, it is divorced from what is unreal, where we say sin is good and doing good is evil. Now, I want to ask you a question because I want to talk to you about issue one. (laughs) Where do we live today? Yeah, it's... We're seeing more and more of the unreal occurring in the actual, right? On, on planet Earth, we're seeing a lot of stuff where we say, oh, you know what? Wow, it, th- this, this activity or that activity is good. And we, we know that right here, it says, no, that's evil. <laughs> God said that's evil, right? And, and so how do we respond to that? And wow, it, it, is, it is getting more and more complex. It's a wonderful thing, though, that we have this right here. 
because we can keep going back there, right? Keep going back. So, so we need to get through the top of this, uh, this uh, outline quickly. You need to move down through quickly, so get your pen writing. So you have notes if you're a note taker, right? You can say, okay, I got all the stuff about this because th this is kind of important when we come to a place called a voting booth. Now, I don't want you to get stuck in, okay, well, this was all about issue one or this was all about how we should vote. If, if, you, if your mind goes there, you miss the whole point. <laughs> so you, we live in a place that is real, that has the presence of God. You and I walk in the kingdom of God. And so, so we got to be, whoa, we got to say, whoa, what does that mean? How, does, how should that look, right? How should that look in the actual? And when I'm in the actual and I'm confronted with the unreal, what do I do then? We, we got to get, get beyond just, okay, well, yeah, November 7th, I got to go to the voting booth. And then next November, I got to go to the voting booth, right? If, if, if that's where we end up here, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to tell you that. <laughs> and I hope we get beyond it because what we saw that was real is what we read. And that there were ch children, four children last week who said, I want to enter into the waters of baptism and I want to obey God. That's beautiful. That's real. <laughs> right? Okay, good, good. So let's, uh, let's get down through this, um, this outline here. And the text that we're looking at is this great passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. And I've also written down some other texts for you here, because when we come to the place of a, something like issue one, we want to ask ourselves the question, what has God been saying to me lately? Now, if you go to people's church, God has been saying these texts to you. You don't want to miss this right now, because you're going to go to a voting booth. And so you say, whoa, uh, what has God been saying? Well, he, he said, uh, here is who you pray to. And, uh, and these kids right here could help me to know. They, they could say, oh, yeah, we know it's, uh, we're praying to a, uh, a God that is a transcendent creator, sovereign king, truthful and faithful revealer and friend. He, he's, he is a merciful high priest. Just and righteous judge, unconditionally loving father. He is powerful redeemer and good shepherd, right? So I've repeated that to you enough where, you know, some of you say, oh, he's doing that again. My eyes are rolling back in my head. But, but we don't want to miss the fact that, that, that that's who we pray to when we're praying. Because think of what can be unleashed by the power of that person when we pray. And so when I kneel in moments to pray, right, there'll be some, a moment here where I kneel to pray right, right in the middle of this service. That's who I'm going to be praying to. And uh, he is able to act, not just here in Ohio, but around the United States and around the globe in a place like uh, Berlin, Germany, where we had our missionaries, right, come you say, oh, he's able to act there this morning because we prayed here. Whoa, fantastic. He's that God. But then we said, well, what has God said? And we, so we went through some things God has said. And, and, and how did Jesus pray? And so we went through some things that Jesus prayed, and we'll come to that. But, but I want us to keep asking the question, where do I live? And what is my response to something? Now, it, this, is, this is so cool because uh, I used to ask this of the kids at the, uh, at the elementary school. I'd say, what's God been saying to you? And if you can imagine me in an elementary school, right? <laughs> it's a funny thing just to think of me walking around the halls at your elementary school. And I walk up to, you know, a student like Logan here. Uh, there's uh, Kane Robinson was a student the same age as Logan. And I walk up to Kane and I say, hey, Kane, what God, what's God been saying to you? Now, K Kane was a funny looking kid. He looked like an old man when he was five. 
So, so he, he had a little bit of a receding hairline already, okay, and he had a fro out here. So, so, and, and he, he kind of walked like an old man, and he was just serious like an old man, you know? And so, so it was cool. And, he go, and, and I, mo, mo, you, you think when you ask a kid, well, what's God been saying to you? He's going to say, nothing, right? I mean, that's the expectation. But, but the kids where I was got so used to me coming up that they wanted to make conversation, right? And say, hey, what's God been saying to you? So here's Cain, right? He's walking down the car. He goes, oh, pastor. He goes, God's been talking to me. I said, what? Whoa, seriously? He said, well, you know, you didn't say nothing? No, he said, no, he's been talking to me. I said, well, how's he been talking? He says, well, I had this dream. He says, God was in my dream and also Jesus. I said, whoa, Cain. Did, uh, what did it mean? Or what did he say to you? He says, Cain, you're safe when the lights go out in your room at night. Does that sound like God? That sound, sounds like God. Cain was having a dream, right? And what happened was heaven, heaven came into his actual sleep. And he goes, whoa, God is here. But you and I need to be asking this question. What's God been saying to us? Well, he, he said, this is who I am, the Lord's Prayer. This is, this is the, these are the things I've said, Deuteronomy and Exodus, right? Here, here, is, here is the way my son prayed for you. Don't miss it. And then you have an armor by which you can fight. So, so this great passage, 2 Corinthians, right? It, it goes down, and uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna like fill out this information regarding it, because it's gonna tell us here that uh, though we walk around in the what, in the flesh, right? That we walk around in the flesh, we, uh, as those who are living over here in God's kingdom, we. Uh, are, um, see my little, oh, see my, my place got lost. Okay, here we go. We, we are waging war not according, we are not waging war according to the flesh. Now, I want to ask you, are we in, uh, we, we don't have, we don't have guns going off here or bombs. We're not in Israel right now, right? And there, that's happening there. We're not, we don't live in the Ukraine, but I want you to picture those p persons that are Christians living in those places where bombs go off. But we, we are in a spiritual war, and we, we don't want to mistake the fact that it's a war. And God is saying, you know what, I, I've given you some things here that are not of this world by which... You are to wage that war. And, and so when we heard Jesus pray for us, he said, Lord, you know what? I don't want you to take them out of the world. So here's this place right here. This is the actual, right? He says, don't, don't take them out of there. They are no more of this world than I am of this world. But I want you to take them and I want you to set them aside to yourself. I want you to sanctify them by your truth. And then he said what? Your word is truth. He said, I am going to set myself aside. I'm going to sanctify myself to you, God, so that they too may be truly sanctified. So that we could be in the world, but not of it. We could be walking around like the Apostle Paul said, you know what? I want you to live. I want you to move. I want you to have your being in the person of God. Wouldn't that be great? If, if that's the air that we breathe, is hidden with Christ in the person of God. And so, so that, that's the way this starts out. And then it says, the weapons of our warfare have what kind of power? Divine power. Wow. So, so the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that God slung the universe into place, 
That same power is available to us to fight the war. But it's also, here it is, it's available inside of us so I can say nice things to my wife when I may not feel like it, right? It, it, it's available to us so that uh, we, we can, so, so that like this week, um, you know, I'm thinking of this message about, about saying, hey, you know, we, we probably got to address issue one. What in the world do you talk, how do you talk about this? And so, so I ask the question, well, what's God been saying to me? He's been saying these messages to me, right? <laughs> we have an awesome God. He has said some very specific things. A and uh, that, that his son knelt down and prayed for us. Whoa. And then he has given us some weapons with which to fight. What do the weapons look like? And so we just need to go down and list them again because you should memorize these because you should be praying them. Say, Lord, put, allow me to be truthful, right? So the very first one is that he has given us truth. Now, I want, I want to remind us of some things God said. Exodus chapter 20. You shall not commit what? Adultery. This is very true about issue one. I'm sorry to tell you this, but the Bible has a lot to say about sexual sin. It says, flee it. Get away from it. Don't go there, Timothy. Paul says to Timothy, right? Don't go there, man. Right? Um, the psychologist friend that I run with uh, talks to a lot of Christian leaders. And uh, so he was with a graduate school class uh, two weeks ago. And he told them, uh, these, these students that are doctoral students getting ready to kind of lead mega churches, don't go to Stupidville, he said. He says, I'm sorry to be this blunt with you, but there's been so much moral failure. Don't go to Stupidville. And he got more blunt than that, and I can't be as blunt as he was with them here. Uh, because, you know, we, we've seen too much of this, right? Too much of uh, moral failure in, among believers. And so uh, it, it's, a, you know, it's a great passage here, uh, right here in 1 Thessalonians, and we should just read it be, out, out loud here in our midst. It says, uh, for the will of God is your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control your, his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger, in all things, as we told you before and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us to impurity but to holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this disregards not man but God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. So, so, so when we said, okay, you know what? It's okay, and, and this is, uh, I, I want to, I'm not going to read Romans chapter 1 to you, but it says the wrath of God is being revealed out of heaven. And why is it being revealed out of heaven? Well, f first of all, people said, you know what? I, I really think that instead of being thankful to my creator and worshiping him as a creator, thank, thankful and worshipful, right? Instead of doing that, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to worship the created. And you notice I'm coming down a step, right? You see me. <laughs> I'm going to worship the created thing, not the creator. And then I, I might actually, you know, see that, hey, the created thing's kind of cool, so I'll build an idol to it. And so once you do that, you are going to do the next thing. You're going to engage in sexual impurity. Now, do, do you see this happening in the culture right now? Oh, my goodness. And, and once you engage in sexual impurity, you will have men with men. And the, the next phase of it is you'll have men with men and women with women, right? Do you see this happening? And, and the next phase of it is you will have a reprobate mind. You won't be able to tell 
what is right and what is wrong anymore, and you will live in a place that is unreal. Whoa. It's, it's a downward spiral that, spiral that spirals out of control. And, and let me just say, this is true. It's, it's in God's word. We're not making this up. It's true. So, so when we come to issue one, we don't want to mistake that that's where it originates. It, it, it isn't just about the, the, uh, the business of, of abortion. It, it is about the business of, wow, there is, we, we are off the rails in sexual immorality. And it is spun out of control. And we, would, we could get to a place where you and I would have to go to a voting booth and vote about reproductive rights, right? It's unreal. That's unreal. <laughs> so, wanna, wa wa want to understand that that's the truth from God's word. And, and then the, the wonderful thing is, is that our next weapon is righteousness. That you and I have been given Christ to indwell us so that we know the difference between right and wrong. And, and this verse that, you know, we've been praying here to get to, together is, uh, you know, Lord, show me the right path. Oh, point out the road you want me to follow. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me all day long. I, I All day long, I hope in you that, that, that we can ask God for direction when we come up to temptation. And we have a God who's present at all places and is able to give us direction. Isn't this awesome? Everybody say, praise God. Yeah, because we don't have to give way to temptation. Right? So this is cool. And, and then the next one is very important. And about uh, 20 of us or so spent the week, uh, sat, sat Saturday uh, a week ago, uh, studying about uh, the gospel of peace is our next one. Okay, so gospel of peace. And I just want to camp there for one second. And I want to bring the whiteboard over because I don't want to miss this. Because this was, this was so fantastic about this issue. Is, is we spent the day talking about how do we be... Uh, like uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. So if you're taking notes, you can write down that passage. But how do we be ambassadors of reconciliation? H how does the gospel of peace come into an issue like we're facing right now and say, wow, those guys actually are showing unusual ability to reconcile matters. And so, so he, drew this, um, he drew this triangle. My triangle won't look very good, but I'll do the best I can. And he said, you know, there, there uh, is a way to think about reconciliation. And it is, you know, I am one corner of this, me, and you are the other corner of this. And if it's just me against you, we're going to butt heads. <laughs> boom, 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 right? Have you had this experience? Where you say, yeah, you know, and, and you know, we, we have it at home with, with, uh, between husband and wife. You know, it's like, oh, man, I, I'm going to get my way on this. Boom, right? And they say, no, you're not going to get your way. I'm getting my way. Boom. Uh, we have it in the workplace. Uh, goofy enough, we have it in the church. It's like me against you, man. We're, I'm going to get what I want in this deal. So, 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 so he gave us these four G's, but the the first G is get God's mind. So, so, so if you have two people who are able to say, you know what, this is not about flesh and blood. This is about getting God's mind. And we look to God. If Laura and I look to God when we're getting ready to fight, <laughs> we say, you know, it's It's unbelievable. Like, what is God's mind about this? What's God been saying to you, right? Kane Robinson, what's God been saying to you? Well, God said to me uh, that this is very important to my wife, right? And I need to probably figure out a way to give way on this in some way. But I know that the words I said a while ago, I got to apologize for because I was an idiot. I said, I said something stupid. I get to say, hey, I'm very sorry for the way I approached that. And God has been talking to me here 
and he has said that I should come back and I should reconcile with you, but the first thing, the next G, right, is you get God, and then you get the plank out of your own eye. <laughs> this is the gospel of peace, people. It's not easy. We come to issue one, right? We've got to get the plank out of our own eye, and, th and then you say, oh, n now I'm going to go reconcile, and I'm going to get forgiveness. I'm going to exchange forgiveness across this relationship, right? So, so very important that uh, we, we get this idea that, that we are not in a fight of flesh and blood. We are in a fight against the rulers, against the authorities, against the principalities of this dark world, world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And the only way to fight that is you better get God's mind. Because I want to tell you something. You know, uh, you know, Simon the sorcerer in the book of Acts, you know, he's going to say, hey, I want to get some, I want to get some mojo working here and get some Jesus action going. And I'm going to, I want to say the same thing I'm seeing uh, these other, these disciples of Jesus. I want to see what, you know, you just do an incantation and be able to cast out the devil, right? And, and what does the, what does the devil say to those guys? <laughs> well, we, we know the apostle Paul. We know that guy, he's got real chops, he's got game. And, and, and we know Jesus, Jesus has got game, but we don't know you. And, and the guys who were demon-possessed, right, they beat the tar out of those guys that were trying to, just by an incantation, get rid of the devil. So, so you and I have got to get God's mind, get the plank out of our own eyes, go be reconciled to one another first, right? That's the gospel of peace. And so so we, we, we have to continue to practice that. And then what else do we have? Wow, we have faith. We have salvation. I love this idea that, that somebody as awful as me could, could actually be rescued out of sin and rescued to God. Isn't this great news? And, and if that's true for you this morning, you have to go, woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. It's exactly, exactly, it's exactly right. It, it, all the things that, in salvation, all the things we read about the French kids, that happened to you and me. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. So, so, so we say, wow, it's very exciting. And then we have this, the word of what? Yeah, this isn't just some book. I, I'm finding out that when I'm looking in here, like Thomas Burton said, you look in this book, and it's looking back at you. Say, whoa, the Bible's looking back at me, and it sees who I am and what I'm thinking right now, and it's coming out with the words right here, and, and ah, ah, I got to get the plank out of my eye, and I got to go be reconciled, right? The Word of God. And then we have prayer in the Spirit to put all of this weaponry into action. So you can write that down there. So, so th this is the great place, right, where we say, whoa, I I'm pumped up enough that I want to be like the Apostle Paul right here and say, you know, the, for this reason right here, uh, you know, from, from the French kids to these three places we're living and et cetera, I, I just want to kneel down before the Father uh, who, you know, the whole, the whole uh, you know, his whole family in heaven and earth derives its name, and, and I want to just, uh, you know, pray that each one of us would be strengthened with, out of his glorious riches, be strengthened with power in our inner being so, so that uh, Christ might dwell in our hearts by faith and that we, being rooted and established in love, might together with all the saints know how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know that love that surpasses knowledge so we might be filled to all the fullness of the measure of God. <laughs> and and so, so when we come to issue one, this is where we better be. And so this, this is a great moment to kneel down and pray. So we bow our heads. If you say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, I'd like to join you at the, at the front and kneel. Or I'd like to kneel in the pew. You feel free to kneel. But, but I'm, I'm kneeling right now because this is, this is big. So, Father, there are these uh, three places we could live in this culture. We could live in a place called the kingdom of God. And we could breathe that air that is God's air. And we saw this in our sanctuary here last week when we had communion and we had baptism. My goodness. 
we were living and breathing the ki- in, in the kingdom of God, and we felt as though we were hidden with Christ and God, and that we were trusting these children into that mighty hand of Jesus and the Father, and that in that hand, no man can pluck them out. Now, we want this life for others. And so we are going to now begin to pray that you would give us your mind. In thing, There's going to be multiple kinds of things like this that we're going to go to voting booths and we're going to be talking about over coffee tables. And we would like you to, that, that we could have your mind about how we respond. We don't want it to be us against them <laughs> or me against you. We would love to have your mind and then be uh, ha- having the plank out of our own eye go and do godly peacemaking and reconciliation. Now, Lord, with some, that's not possible. We understand that. And so there are places called voting booths, and we pray that the divine power of God would go to those places. We trust you uh, that you see us and that when we go to vote, it is, it is not, it's a transcendent moment. And that we, we would be chilled all over ourselves by going into that place and saying, uh, this is not just about filling in a little black space. This right here is about life. That you came not to kill, steal, and destroy. God, you came to give life, and to give it abundantly. And we pray this now in the powerful name of Jesus with thanksgiving. God's people said, amen, amen. So, man, we got a ways to go. We got to keep working here. You ready? Get your seatbelts on? Okay, so, so here's the cool thing is when we pray in the spirit of God uh, with, the, with these, with these um. Uh, weaponry, uh, we have the ability to destroy strongholds. Now, in, in 1973, a, a stronghold was created. And, and since that time, just in the ones record, recorded, right, 64 million uh, abortions where kids did not have the opportunity. And those are just the ones recorded, so you might want to just multiply that by two, okay? Um, but, but they did not have the opportunity to come into the baptistry with me and take communion. They didn't get the opportunity. But, but, but these guys did. <laughs> Praise God. Right. Be, because we want to remember that, um, that, these, that these weapons then have the ability to, and once we pray them into effect, it can destroy stuff. We have a God who can, can do that. Okay? Now, it, it won't look like we think. When God destroys things, it doesn't look like we think it's going to look. You know, we think, okay, there's going to be a big lightning bolt from, you know, God's going to strike those people. Or he's going to put them in their place on national television. Or there's going to be a really bad Facebook post. I'm telling you, I don't think that's the way God does business. He does wholesale cleaning house on these kinds of things. And, and nothing is left that you can imagine uh, uh, being, being there. You say, oh, yeah, that's always going to exist. That's always going to be present, you know. Uh, the, the, the wall there, right, uh, of communism, right? You say, oh, that wall's always going to be there. That's, ne- that's never coming down. First, there was a little chink in it, and then there was a big hole in it, and now it does not exist. That's that's because God, he he wipes out stuff like that. Now, the next thing that we do, though, is that we have to take captive what? Every, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And... um, I don't know, I, you guys, you know, our brains are constantly moving, right? 
we're constantly thinking stuff. And, and, the, and the difficulty of, of, of this is that we have televisions in our house, and we have computers, and we have this goofy thing right here, right, in our pockets, and, and they all tell us how to think all the time. Oh, you ought to think this. You ought to be thinking that. Why aren't you thinking this? Right? And, you, you know, you press your favorite news uh, outlet, right, and you scroll down, and you see what's happened to uh, the... Israel uh, today, uh, what's going on with President Biden and his son Hunter, you're seeing what's going on with, uh, you know, ex-President Trump, you're seeing, and, and, and these guys are telling you what you, they're telling you what you ought to think, and, he, and here's a better question, what's God been saying to you, say it together, what's God been saying to you, <laughs> and he's, he's been saying a truckload to you, if you're a people's church. Because guess who else he told that stuff to? Yeah, I've had to change my little act, right? Because God has been talking to me (laughs) through these messages. And and the one thing that just blew my socks off, right, is when we got got to the idea that, uh, that Jesus is about life. And I started looking at these things, and I said, Whoa, every single one of these things about that Jesus said about himself has to do with life. I'm the bread of life, right? I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, doggone it. Right? And, and then and then it's just, I, I, it was just what I prayed a while ago. I didn't come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give abundant Life as the one who is the door for the sheep and the good shepherd, right? And so, so that's why we trust th- these kids, kids around the room here, kids sit, sitting in the back. We say, oh, put them in God's hands, man. Why? Because that's where life is, right? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then, and then it says... Oh my goodness, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then I am the true what? Fine. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you're going to bear much fruit. What does that mean? You're going to have life and you're going to bear fruit. You go out to Glorious and there's those fruit, fruit trees out there. They bear fruit, right? And Glorious running around out there trying to you know, harvest all that stuff because you've got to stay up with it, right, Nathan? But, um, but the thing is, is, is those trees have life. And they produce apples or fruit because there's life. And so our God, this is, this is cool because our God is not a God of death. God's a God of life. And so, so you say, well, what has he been saying to you? Has he been saying you, all these, you know, or has he been saying, I'm a God of life with a megaphone? Well, I, I believe if you're at people's church, what he's been saying is, I'm a God of life with a megaphone. And so so we don't want to miss what he has been saying. And so we take, we have to take thoughts that we see, uh, thoughts that people say to us, we have to take them captive and we make them obedient to Christ. Now, I just want us to think of, you know, I will sing of his love forever. (laughs) Because in in the matter of issue one, for instance, this is one illustration out of a hundred we could do. We're just illustrating by one thing today. We could say, well, you know what? I'm going to be nasty and mean, and I'm going to go around and say, I'm going to wear a big T-shirt that says, no, get away from me. You worker of inequity, I never knew you. Right? That's not my job. <laughs> That's God's job. And so, so this is the problem, a little bit of the problem, with, you know, Facebook posts or, you know, a sign in my front yard. And is it okay to put a sign in your front yard? Yeah, you have the choice to put that sign out there in the front yard. So praise God, man, if you're, if you're doing that, it's okay. That's, that's fine. I don't have a front yard, so I can't, <laughs> can't put my sign out. But, 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 but this is the problem with it is that if we just have a big no – I tattoo no across my chest, and I come up, I come this morning, and I come in without my shirt on, right? 
They say, hey, you gave us nightmares, man. We saw that. But, 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 but I, I do that, right? The, the love of Christ that we're singing about forever has a way broader understanding of this matter. He understands, wow, this goes way back to Exodus chapter 20 and people began to commit what? Adultery. And uh, it, it, it breaks all these, uh, all these places of sin. And I, I want to ask you, is there, is there forgiveness in Christ? Well, no, not for those people. They, they, they had an abortion, right? No. I know a, a very devout uh, Christian lady, right? Who was my sister in Christ. And she went through this. And she still is working through trying to make this reconciled in her own spirit. And my only response can be to show the listening and the affection of Jesus. And so if I say, you know, no, you did that, I can't even talk to you. No, you did that, you're going to hell. Whoa. Who put me in charge? Who, who put me in the place of God? And if I, if I wear the T-shirt that says no, there may be somebody who comes along and says, oh, you know what? I was wondering about Jesus. I see that there's some joy in your life, and I don't have that, right? And I voted opposite you for president, and I voted opposite you for this, and I voted opposite you for, uh, of you on that. You say, no, you can't come near me, right? We want to be careful. Because uh, he transcends our, our vote in the booth. He transcends it. He's bigger than that. And so, so it would be great, right, if I walk into that booth and I'm sitting next to somebody who's voting yes on issue one and I'm voting no. I'm gonna, and I'm, so I'm letting you come in the booth with me. I'm not going in the booth, booth with you, right? But, but be, me and Laura are going to the booth. We're going to vote no. We're going to fill that out, and it's going to be a big, make sure that the black circle is all filled in, and there's no uh, things outside the circle, right? It's, on that one right there is going to be no. But let's say I'm voting next to somebody who said yes, and, and Laura and I go, and there's nobody there because we're the first people in line. We vote at, you know, 6.30 in the morning. We get in line at 6, and it's dark, and... Uh, we're going to go there and vote no. And so, so if I'm voting next to somebody who votes yes, and I walk out, and it's just two or three of us standing there, I say, well, how did, how, how, you know, they say, well, well you know, boy, I, I'm glad I got my vote because I got reproductive rights now, right? How, what did, how did you vote, right? I said, well, you know what, I, I, I filled out no because I've always thought that abortion breaks the very heart of God. But I want you to know that I love you very much. And I want you to know something else. God loves you very much. If you ever want to talk about that, I'm your guy. <laughs> right? I'll be your guy. Because, because uh, if, if it's just no, get away from me, it closes the door down to anyone who stands over there. And so, so th this, this is important. And so, so we want to come back to the idea, where do I live? And those of us who are in Christ, if we would allow ourselves, we live in this amazing place called the kingdom of God. And we're camped down here. And uh, th there can be this measure of us saying, uh, we engage things, though, in the actual so the uh, the so so uh, I, I'm a believer, right? But I'm going to the Browns game, <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> and I'm walking in the kingdom of God, and I'm walking in there, and I'm in the Browns thing, you know. And and, and the people who are sitting next to me are worshipers, not of God, but they're worshipers of football. 
And, 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 and every Sunday they build an idol and they put on a, on a, on a, bull, on a, on a mask, right? And, they're, and this guy who, is, who, who now has become unreal pours his beer on me. And h- how does somebody who's walking in the kingdom of God respond to being all wet with something that's unreal? stuff and I got to pause and say wow what what is true what is righteous what makes peace what 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 is faith look like in this moment right what 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 would it be to put on the helmet of salvation and, and what would the word of God that, that's I'm immersed in through my whole life right what 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 does the word of God want me to be and do right now and and and, and then how could I just like even pause to pray in the spirit in this moment So I don't go, because that doesn't look like I'm walking in the kingdom when I clocked that guy who poured his beer on me. So I, so I end with this uh, illustration because I had a flat tire this morning on the way here and it was raining. It was pouring rain right then. So, So this reminded me of this. So, so God is in this message, <laughs> right? Because uh, in, in 1995, I think it was, um, I was driving my car because I was a traveling preacher at the time. I was driving my car uh, north of Nashville on, is it I-65 there? Does that make sense? I-65, yeah. And... I heard this not noise. Go, go, go. And then I heard the following noise that was after that. Psst. And I started leaning over in my car. And I got out of my car to find out that I had not one flat tire, but two flat tires. Now that's a math problem, okay? That's a mathematics problem because how many spares do you have in your trunk? You got one spare. You got one. And it was Sunday, just like today, Sunday. I went into the guy at Quickville this morning and said, hey, what do you, what do you think about getting a, like, a, like, a, you know, like a new tire because I think I wrecked the one I'm, I'm using right now. <laughs> it's Sunday, man. Don't you know it's Sunday? You're not getting anything. Maybe we'll call Walmart for you. Let's call Walmart. So we call Walmart. They say, yeah, we'll, we give you a new tire. So anyway, but, but, but on this day, it was Sunday, right? And uh, I, I'm in I, I, the north side there, and it's the hood. So I get back in my car, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, what in the world am I going to do right now? And up comes running, running down, running down the highway. Uh, a, a, about a six foot three to six foot five uh, African American man, and he's a big guy. And I thought, man, maybe what I ran into was him, and he is coming back here to whoop me in my car. Now, I, I I'll be honest with you, I was brought up in a way uh, from people from the deep south, and they. Not, they gave me a very uh, inappropriate and negative idea about anybody who didn't have the same color of skin as me. And so the guy is bigger than me, number one. He has a different color skin than me, number two. He has two great big hoop gold earrings, and he has a scar across his forehead. And he knocks on my window. I mean, I put my window up, right? And he's knocking on my window now. And he's, he's talking through the window. And I put, a, I put a little crack there, you know. I say, yes, sir. And he says, did you hit it too? Did you hit it too? He goes, yeah, I hit that thing. He goes, I got a flat tire. And, and so this man named William and his live-in girlfriend named Tara They stayed out there on I-65 with me. This happened in like early afternoon. They stayed out there with me till 10 o'clock p.m. 
that's when we finally got both, all three tires changed, right? So here's William kneeling down at my car, not his car. His car's done now. He's helping me do my car, right? And we had to, you know, jack up two places, right? <laughs> So, so we had the jack under there. He's, chain, he's pulling off the lug nuts off of mine, and he's putting on the, the new, you know, the replacing. We put the tire on. He's replacing that, those lug nuts. And he says, by the way, what do you do? Oh, no, man. This is going so well, and now this is going to go poorly. I said, well, I'm a traveling Bluetooth. <laughs> he goes, what are you? I said, I'm a, I'm a preacher. He goes, you are? He goes, fantastic, you know, because I think God is after me. I said, what, what do you mean God's after me? He goes, well, he goes, you know what? He goes, I have had a couple of things happen to me that I just, I just know. He, and I went to a pastor, and the pastor said, you know, God is, I think God's after you. And, and he said, the, the one was I, I was in a drug deal, and, um, and you know, the, the guy, uh, I was sitting in the front, and the guy was sitting in the back, and he pulled his pistol, and he put it at the base of my skull. He said, I'm going to blow your brains out. And he goes, you know, I jumped out of that car. It was going about 50 miles an hour. I jumped out of the side. I rolled, and I got up and ran away. And I lived through it. And my pastor said, God's after me. He goes, then I got really sick, and they thought, they thought I had AIDS. And I was in the hospital. I had some kind of immune problem going on, and I just about died. And my pastor came in and prayed. I got better. And my pastor said, listen, William. God is after you, man. He goes, you keep living through these near-death things. I think God is after you. And he turned around and looked over his shoulder. He goes, what are you thinking? I said, well, you know what? It's kind of funny, but you and Tara ran over something on I-65 that I ran over. And so we're standing out here. I think God is probably after you, man. you guys uh, you ever asked Jesus to be your personal savior well no no that is it, are we allowed to do that yeah yeah would you like to just pray right here we join hands there the trucks are going shoo, 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 past us and we said God uh, come into the life of William and Tara right will you guys pray with me right so, so they prayed there with me that God would, uh, would take away their sin by what Jesus did at the cross. That he would come and live in their lives and live in their brokenness and then uh, give them eternal life. We let go of hands. We both got in our cars. We went our separate ways. doing my good little thing driving around in the kingdom of God, right? Being a good little preacher around the, around the Mid-South. Gung, gung! Something happened in the actual world. These kinds of things can happen in the actual world. People get sick. People pass away. Uh, people run over stuff. Issue, issue one occurs and we have to go to a voting booth. And some of that stuff is created by what is unreal and twisted. And uh, William began to tell me of his unreal twisted life, right? In the actual world, heaven came down. God's after me. God's after you and me. God may be after the person who's voting next to you. Or the person who had an abortion, right? And so, so we, we have to be unusually sensitive, and yet we have to stand firm. He says, after you have done everything to stand firm, stand firm then.
because there will be a day of evil come. And, and, and I believe we're in a, that, that kind of day right now at Faith Church. But when there is a day of evil, wow, light and life. What we experienced last week in a baptism service right here. It pushes back, pushes back the black. So I would, I would just ask you, uh, as you consider uh, all the issues that we're going to issue, <laughs> all, all the various things that we're going to need to vote on, um, all the conversations that you have over coffee tables, right? Approach those with being fully clothed, not partially clothed, fully clothed with God's armor. If you have truth, but you don't have the gospel of peace, you've got a problem. <laughs> because uh, I can come to you with truth and beat you on the head with my Bible. And you know what? Nobody gets saved when that happens. But if I say, no, man, this is the truth. This is awesome. It's right out of God's word. Isn't this great? And let's, let's come together on it. And then when we can't come together, we, we still say, you know what? I have an attitude. Uh, the final point of peacemaking is I have this attitude like Jesus did at the cross where he looked at those that were crucifying him and he said, Father, what? Forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. So his attitude was still extending himself, still forgiving at the end of the day. Oh, that we could be that. Could we pray that together, please? Let's pray. So, Father in heaven, thank you for uh, getting to talk about, uh, really kind of bringing all that we've been talking about and listening to we want to ask ourselves, what have we been, what have you been saying to us? Bringing all of that together and saying, oh, now we have a, an actual place to go practice it. And we're praying that when we go up to a voting booth, that it will be the same thing as when William and Tara and I ran into a, a, a two by four or a four by four on the way to, on the way north of Nashville, that you will, that heaven will dawn in a voting booth and that will be full of your truth, your righteousness, your peace, your faith, your salvation, and the word of God. And that we will pray in those moments so that we sense your presence in the spirit of God. We trust you now for this. We pray it in the powerful name of Jesus. Let's stand and sing. Matthew 19, 26, Jesus said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. In Psalm 80, 18 to 19, it's, it's written, Then we will not turn away from you. We Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. Our God is a God of revival. <laughs> seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you will do again. There's no prison wall you can break through no mountain you can move all things are possible there's no broken body you can raise no soul that you can save all things are possible the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up, oh God of revival. 
Let hope arise. Death is overcome. You've already won. Oh, God of revival. You rose in victory. And now you're seated forever on the throne. So why should my heart fear what you defeated? I will trust in you alone Cause there's no prison wall you can break through No mountain you can move All things are possible There's no broken body you can raise No soul that you can save All things are possible the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of revival, God of revival. Come awaken your people, come awaken the city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, come awaken your people. Come awake in the city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. The darkest night. You can light it up, you can light it up, oh God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of revival, come awaken your people. Come awake in this city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awake in your people. Come awake in this city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains in the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. There's no prison wall you can break through, no mountain you can move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all things are possible, things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.
strengthens me. Wow, praise God. Praise God. Let's sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Receive that as the benediction. Go and follow him. Amen? Amen. All right. You are dismissed.